San Diego Comic Con. I'm your host, Jessica Choba, and welcome to the Marvel Studios Hall H San Diego Comic Con panel. So, before we get started, a little bit of housekeeping. Uh, you guys all should have received a ticket when you walked in. Make sure and follow directions on the back of that ticket because when you leave, well, they're getting passed out. <laughs> When you leave, if you, when you follow the directions, that will get you a Hall H exclusive Infinity Saga card collector set. So make sure and hang on to that. Don't lose it. And so with that, we've got lots of awesome stuff to show you. So without further ado, help me welcome to the stage president of Marvel Studios, Kevin Feige. The Infinity Saga is complete. Thanks to all of you. We started here in Hall H. Who was here for the first time we showed footage from Iron Man? Awesome. 23 interconnected movies from Iron Man 1 to Spider-Man Far From Home. The Infinity Saga complete. I never thought it would happen, and it never would have happened if it were not for all of you. So thank you. It's true. You know, as long as, as we're thanking people and thanking all of you, I also want to thank Alan Horn, our chairman of the Walt Disney Company, Alan Bergman, our co-chairman, Bob Iger, who runs the whole place. The Infinity Saga would not have happened, I promise you, without their support and their guidance and their care. So you should be very appreciative to them as well. And I'm also going to do something that we've never done before, but it seemed right to do today. I want to introduce you to the Marvel Studios staff who made every one of these movies. And I'm gonna bring them out one at a time, starting with my co-president, Ludi Esposito. The amazing Victoria Alonso. Steven Broussard. Trin Tran. Nate Moore. Sarah Smith. Jonathan Schwartz, Eric Carroll, Wendy Jacobson, Brian Shapek, Joey Negelow, and Grant Curtis. Now, now listen, I know, I know we don't look like much, but the fact is, all of these people bust their ass 24 hours a day, seven days a week, some of them for a decade or more to make the movies that you just saw in that little piece. Every single one of them, many of them are working on things I hope you love someday, but I want you to hear it, and I, let's hear it again for them, please. And, and I think it's also, I want them to stay out here when, when I tell you that I literally just heard from our uh, folks in Disney distribution, that within a matter of days, Avengers Endgame will be the biggest film in history. The biggest film of all time. Now, you have to shout out to Mr. James Cameron, who held that title for a long time. If you, if you adjust for inflation, he still holds the title. And he'll probably get the title again as soon as he puts out another movie. But for right now, today in Hall H, Thanks to you, Avengers Endgame is the biggest film of all time. All right. Thank you. Truly. All right, team. Thanks very much. Watch your step. If you see them out and about, be careful. Be gentle with them. It's very uh, precious folks here. Now. Now, now I could spend 90 minutes talking about what we've done. Or I could spend some time talking about what we're about to do. Phase four of the MCU, and we're going to take you through all the projects we're working on from 2020 to 2021. There's a lot of untitled things up there. And you know what we're going to do? We're going to start 
right off the bat with our film on November 6, 2020. Something entirely new, entirely different for the MCU, a group of immortals who've been on Earth for 35,000 years. They've been there amongst the MCU. We haven't met them before. This film is full Jack Kirby. And I want you guys to say a big hello to our director, Director of Eternals, Chloe Zhao. Show everybody your shirt. It says, uh, I have friends on that Death Star. Oh. <laughs> did cool. you buy that here, or did you, did you already have that? Oh, nice. Um, Chloe, really quick question. What drew you to the film? Um, I just really, really wanted to make a Marvel movie for so long, because I've been a fan of MCU for a decade, and when I watch their movies, I see how much this team loves their fans and loves their characters. So I said I want to make a Marvel movie. And, and also for this film, for the Eternals, um, it's about these group of incredible immortals, but through their journey, we really get to explore what it means to be human and humanity in our time on this planet. So we can't wait to share the film with you. Do you guys have any interest in meeting some of the Eternals? All right, ladies and gentlemen, as Icarus, Richard Madden. Makari, Lauren Ridloff. Yeah. As Fastos, Brian Tyree Henry. I'm gonna bring out the leader of the Eternals playing Ajax, Salma Hayek. Playing Sprite, Leah McHugh. And his big bad Gilgamesh, Don Lee. And finally, unbelievably, playing Thena, Angelina Jolie! Well, thank you guys so much for joining us here at Comic-Con. I've got a couple of quick questions, so I'm just gonna go down the line. Uh, Richard, can you tell us who the Eternals are and what role your character plays within that? Um, the Eternals are a race of immortal aliens <laughs> sent to Earth by the Celestials to protect humankind from the Deviants. And I play Icarus, who is the sexiest of the, uh, the most powerful. Okay, all right, calm down. <laughs> um, Lauren, what is your the first deaf hero in the MCU? Oh, I have to say, well, I do have a son, and he asked me, after he read Greek mythology, he was reading through that, and he's like, what does honor mean? This, this is what honor means. I'm so honored to be here. Kumail, first question, when are we gonna hang out, dude? Uh, I've got something on my plate right now. <laughs> yeah. um, you are no stranger to San Diego Comic-Con, but what's it like being up here on stage at Hall H? I'll say I've been to Comic-Con eight times, and this is the first time I've been able to get into Hall H. <laughs> so I don't know how you did it, but I had to take a different approach. 
And I actually brought a mask to walk the floor, so if you see a Hellboy with Pakistani hands walking around, <laughs> trying to buy the He-Man Comic-Con exclusive, don't blow up my spot. <laughs> it's amazing. This is, I am very uh, emotional. more serious question for you. Going into this, having been both a stand-up comic and a dramatic actor, how are you going to use those skills to approach this particular role? Well, you know, I was thinking about this. It used to be, a, a, you know, movies like Casablanca would have sort of everything. They would have action, drama, thriller, romance, comedy. They'd have everything. And then movies sort of became like there had to be little genres. It was like, is, what is this? Is it a comedy? Is this a drama? Is this a thriller? And I feel like Marvel movies are a throwback to those old school Hollywood movies because they have everything. They have action, drama, romance, comedy. They have everything. So I'm just excited to be able to do all of that. Yeah, that is an excellent point. Ryan Tyree Henry, your character Fastos is known for his intelligence. So how does it feel to join a historic lineup of Marvel geniuses? I can't even put into words how amazing this is right now for me to be standing up here. Um, I mean, as, as far as the geniuses go, the geniuses in Marvel are usually the ones with the biggest hearts. And they move from their heart, and I feel like Fastest does the same thing. Uh, and I just want to bring, you know, a whole new flavor to Fastest and make sure that, you know, us and all the Eternals are represented in the best way, you know, to save mankind. So that is why I am here. is the leader of the group, so how does it feel to portray such a strong female superhero in the MCU? It feels great! I take my inspiration from our leader, Chloe, who's also a strong woman, and it, it takes a strong woman to do a movie like this because it's so big and amazing, and I'm so excited to be a part of it. And then the way she approaches leadership as a woman, as a strong woman, is that she sees them as a family. So there's a lot of mother instincts in this eternal who is not supposed to have kids. And um, this is very exciting. And I feel very honored to be a part of a movie that is going to allow people who never felt represented in superheroes, or in this case, Eternals, represented, because I am proud to have a diverse family. Great answer. Um, Angelina, seeing that you've done a lot of action films in the past, with this film coming from a different angle, is your approach to this film going to be any different? Oh, I'm gonna... <laughs> I'm so excited to be here. I'm, uh, I'm going to work ten times harder because I think what, uh, what it means to, to be a part of, uh, of the MCU, what it means to be an Eternal, to be a part of this family. Um, I, I know what, what we all need to do. We have all read the script. We all know what, what the task ahead is and we know what you deserve, so we are all going to be working very, very hard, so I am in training and thrilled. Thank you so much. Leah, how does it feel to be the youngest person to portray one of the oldest MCU characters? <laughs> does it feel real? <laughs> <laughs> and it's so weird because I grew up watching Marvel movies with my whole family. I have four siblings, and it's just it's crazy. <laughs> Jumping into the hugely beloved world yes. of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Yeah. yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. Very excited and so honored to be here. I love this project, and then I can't wait to show you uh, uh, the power of Gilgamesh. Yes, yes. Thank you. So that being said, who would win in a fight, Gilgamesh or the Hulk? Uh, Mark Ruffalo here? <laughs> no? no, I would say Gigamesh. <laughs> nice. Well, I know that you 
guys all have to get back to London to continue working, so I'll let you go. Everybody, big round of applause. That's pretty exciting. That could be that could be the end of the show right there. Now that I think about it. No? Alright. Let's see what's coming up in fall 2020. The Winter Soldier coming to Disney's new streaming platform, Disney Plus. This Disney Plus, let me tell you something, is giving Marvel Studios an opportunity to tell so many more stories that we haven't been able to tell before. Most specifically, what's going on with the Falcon and Winter Soldier post endgame. Ladies and gentlemen, Anthony Mackie and Sebastian Stan. You take it, you take it, hold it. That's enough. Let me let me get it back. <laughs> no, we. All right. Sorry. Hey, be careful. You want to do a little, little something? I am. Uh, I was not expecting vibranium like, to be like that, that heavy. We can talk together. We can talk together. <laughs> What'd you say? I said I wasn't expecting vibranium to be that heavy. That that shield is legit. Yeah, we get that yeah. a lot. Yeah, I am very impressed. Do you guys, do you guys both have kind of See what kind of show this gonna be? <laughs> Sorry. But like, Stop. having a kid and only picking him up with one arm all the time, so one arm is totally discombobulated with the other. <laughs> sure. Yeah, all right. So, okay, great, tight. All right, so, uh, I got a question actually to both of you, so whoever wants to hit this one first, go ahead. Uh, now that you guys really get to dive into the dynamic of these two characters, what are you two excited to explore? Um, I'd like to explore the Falcon as a character. <laughs> what kind of man is this man? We'll find out. <laughs> we know he's got the thighs. So, let's see if there's anything else. Uh, well, with the Winter Soldier, I want to see what really makes him tick. What ticks him off? How much ticking can that clock do before that tick go talk and that talk go boom? I was wondering where we were heading for that, and I was like, yeah, oh, I, cool. I, I came all the way around. You know what I mean? All the way back. Yeah, uh, do you yeah. guys have as much fun on set as you so obviously seem to have offset? Oh, definitely not. <laughs> See how, see how it is? It's going to be yeah. a long six months for some of us. Nah, we have a lot of fun on set. I mean, look, we're living our dream. Mm -hmm. Every one of us asked, dreamed, and prayed to be in a Marvel movie. We have the job that anyone else would kill to have. So why would you mess that up by, having, by not respecting and appreciating the opportunity that you're given? So when we go to work, we have a really good time. That is both good life advice and good career advice. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. don't mess it up. Solid. Uh, Kevin, is there anything else that you can share with us, since it is Hall H and San Diego? Well, sure, I can Comic tell you a little bit more about the show if you want. It's... Uh, 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 Daniel Brule coming back to play Baron Zemo. You guys scared That doesn't though? work anymore. Are you guys nervous at all going up against him? No. <laughs> We've got this. Beat you once, we can beat you twice. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you, Anthony and Sebastian. It's been great having you back here at Hall H. Thank you, guys. <laughs> that we will be releasing 
in 2021, on February 12th, is this. Thanks before. The Ten Rings has been in the MCU since the very beginning. Those sons of bitches that uh, Obadiah Stane hired. They helped out Whiplash a little bit in Iron Man 2. There was an imposter that played the Mandarin in Iron Man 3. You remember that, but you didn't see that in Ant-Man, the Ten Rings logo there. And in an awesome short we did called All Hail the King, we revealed there is a real Mandarin, and he was quite upset with the shenanigans that they pulled in Iron Man 3. Well, the Mandarin is in this film. And I will tell you right now that the amazing Chinese actor, Tony Leung, is playing the Mandarin. Also joining the cast of this film is the incredible Aquafina. And now I want you to meet the director of Shang-Chi, Destin Cretton. Hi, everybody. So many of you out there, that's crazy. <laughs> Dustin, thanks for joining us on stage. First of all, love the cast. Love, love, love the cast. I do too. Um, how does it feel to be at the helm of this movie? Uh, it's scary. Um, I, I, grew up in a, I, I grew up on an island in the middle of the Pacific called Maui. In a, ooh, that's cool. Uh, in a small, small town called Haiku with, that had about the population of this room. Uh, so, standing on this stage is really terrifying for me. Um, but what, what's, what's really cool is I, I, I grew up with friends who were Japanese, Chinese, Caucasian, Filipino, Portuguese, Korean. Um, that's, the, that's the norm in Hawaii and it's so exciting to see Kevin and this amazing team begin to create an MCU that reflects all the beautiful colors that I see in this room. So to be a small part in, in that is really special to me. Awesome. Well, I don't want to torture you by keeping you up here too long, but really quick question. Uh, some of those Easter eggs really surprised me. I didn't even notice half of them, so I'm kind of shocked. Are you excited to dive into the mythology of the Ten Rings and letting audiences into something that you guys have been seeding since Iron Man? Yes. <laughs> yeah. What kind, well, I guess I couldn't say what kind of plans do you have, because then that gives away the whole enchilada, so never mind. <laughs> I mean, it, it's, a, it's amazing stepping into this and just seeing how, how uh, incredible things have been thought out from the very beginning. It's, this is this mind is pretty amazing. Fantastic. So speaking about cast, do you guys have anything you want um, to share? Uh, yeah, maybe. <laughs> um, we we've been uh, you know it's been a a, a really in depth search to try to find somebody who will capture this character with all the dimensions that he deserves um, and it's going pretty well we found him do you want to you guys want to meet him uh, I, I am I, it is a huge honor for me to introduce you to the incredible Simu Liu <laughs> Did you guys get that, by the way? <laughs> Not a damn thing. Okay, that's cool. If I ask this question and you've already answered it, I'm sorry. <laughs> but when did you find out that you would be Shengxi 
And how do you think becoming that part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe is going to change your life? Because okay. it most certainly will. Okay, so, so here's where I have a bone to pick with Kevin, because um, I feel like I was like kind of this social experiment of like, let's just take this guy, this ordinary guy living in Toronto, let's tell him that he's gonna be in the next Marvel movie and give him like four days to prep for it. So oh. literally guys, I was cast on Tuesday. I screen tested on Sunday in New York and um, and this is just the this is just the craziest craziest dream. All your beautiful faces. I can't describe how I feel right now. Have you ever been to San Diego Comic Con before or knew anything about it before you got here? This is my first time. Why is this a difficult hall to get into or <laughs> Something like that? What's your first impression now that you're here? Cuz it's um, a pretty intense con. It is pretty intense. You know, I'm looking out and all your beautiful faces. Um, actually, sorry, if I could answer your last question, because you asked me how it would change my life, and obviously yeah. it's the fulfillment of my dream, but uh, I can't help but think about my parents. My parents immigrated from China to Canada 25 years ago with nothing except the hopes and dreams to build a family and to build a life for their kids, and all I've ever wanted to do growing up was to make them proud. And so basically what I'm trying to say is I'm really, I'm really happy that I'm not a doctor, and so <laughs> take that, mom and dad. Comic Con's great. This is the best crowd ever. I swear, you guys make me. You guys with these parent stories are like killing me over here. Like I can't handle it. Uh, Samu, congratulations on getting the role of Shang Chi. Thank you. And thank you both so much for joining us on stage. Congratulations. Thank you. Both those guys are incredible. I can't wait for you to see what they can do. Uh, you want to see what we're doing in spring 2021? Yeah. Another mega event series we're doing on Disney Plus. If you thought that logo was strange, wait until you see this show. It's unlike anything we've done before. How about you meet Wanda Maximoff, Lizzie Olsen, and The Vision, Paul Bettany. Wanda's character in more depth now that you've got the Disney Plus show coming up. We're gonna have a lot of fun. It's gonna get weird, we're gonna go deep, we're gonna have lots of surprises, and we're gonna finally understand Wanda Maximoff as the Scarlet Witch. <laughs> Paul, if this takes place after the events of Endgame, and certain things have occurred since then, uh, then what is going on with Vision? <laughs> I have no idea. Uh, I, 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 last thing I knew, I died in Infinity War, so I, I literally have never been this confused died many in front times. Of this yeah. many people in my whole life. But all I can tell you is every time we get to do this, the, the stories get richer and richer, and this is the richest it's been, and we're so excited to bring it to you all. So I hope you, hope you love it, because it's going to be surprising and weird. Again, that you guys are pretty early on in this, but is there anything else you can share about the show? Well, uh, it does take place after Endgame. There are some other characters uh, who you've met before in the MCU that will appear in it. One uh, of them, a matter of fact, you met earlier this year as a little girl in 1995. <laughs> so Lieutenant Trouble, Akira Akbar played her wonderfully in Captain Marvel's Little Girl on WandaVision as an adult. Meet your new Monica Rambo, Tiana Paris. Tiana, so this is your first Comic Con, correct? And I heard you braved the show floor wearing a mask. So how did that all go down? Um, it was hot. It was exciting. <laughs> Feeling all of your energy. Uh, thank you. I'm so happy to be here. Oh and to be, I'm shaky. Like I am from Hopkins, South Carolina, and this is really hey. This is a dream to be a Marvel superhero and Monica Rambo. Oh my God. Thank you. Absolutely. Uh, just personal.
question. Did you buy anything on the show floor? Did you find anything cool? Because where and where should I go? <laughs> um, I just walked around. I was too overwhelmed. I just saw. I'm very excited. But I just walked around and wanted to feel everyone's energy. And I am just so very excited. It's just surreal. Fantastic. I love you. Thank you. Thank you guys for joining us here on stage at Hall H. Can't wait to catch WandaVision when it launches on Disney+. Plus. Everybody, give it up for the cast of WandaVision. Uh, I can't tell you how exciting and different and strange that show is going to be. Uh, speaking of exciting, uh, what we're working on also for spring 2021 um, needs no introduction, but we'll give an introduction anyway. Yes. Loki is coming to Disney Plus, and I know what you're saying. Didn't I see Loki die in Infinity War? You did, but what else did you see in Endgame? after Endgame was where did Loki go? What happened to Loki? This series will tell you what happened to Loki right after that. He goes to a number of places. I don't want to spoil them, but I will spoil the first place he went. He came to Hall H. Ladies and gentlemen, Tom Hiddleston. Space Stone, and then the first place you chose to come is Hall H. Solid choice. Solid choice. <laughs> so. uh, the last time I was standing on stage with this gentleman, I was asking him to kneel. <laughs> um, so, uh, but I wouldn't, th there would, this whole thing would not be happening without you. question for you here. The Loki that we see disappear is not necessarily the Loki that we saw grow and change in Thor Ragnarok. So how do you think that this is going to affect your character in this show? Uh, he, um, you guys saw Avengers, right? So, so he's still that guy. Um, <laughs> And just about the last thing that happened to him was he got Hulk smashed. <laughs> so there's a lot of psychological evolution that is still yet to happen. Um, but I, um, I, Kevin has generously shown me of what his plans are. I can't tell you any of them. Uh, but it is one of the most exciting uh, creative opportunities I think I've ever come across. This is a, a new, this is new territory, a new world, uh, new challenges, and um, I cannot wait to get started. Well, thank you so much for choosing Hall H as your first destination to hit after stealing the stone. Tom Hilson, everybody! We have a movie coming out on May 7th, 2021. Want to hear about that? Yeah. All right. Just, just because Quentin Beck makes up lies about the multiverse doesn't mean it isn't real. Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Say hi to the director, Scott Derrickson. Doctor Strange and what excites you about telling another story that surrounds him? 
I mean, what excites me about Doctor Strange is what made him great in the comics, that he doesn't fight uh, villains from this Earth, or even from this universe, but from the multiverse and from other dimensions. So you get into all kinds of psychedelic weirdness, which this movie is going to. But when I came and talked to Kevin about doing a sequel, I said, I don't want to do just another sequel to do a sequel. If I'm going to do it, it has to go into the territory that drew me into the Doctor Strange comics in the first place, which is how they dipped into the gothic and the horror. And the, and the horrific, and we're gonna make the first scary MCU film. Yes! Yes! You had me at goth. <laughs> yeah, you know, you know what? No, it's PG-13, you're gonna like it. Uh, you know what excites me about Doctor Strange? What? The fact that Benedict Cumberbatch plays him. Yes, absolutely. Ladies and gentlemen, Benedict Cumberbatch. situation getting here to Hall H all during your birthday. Nah, I just did this. Because Hall H is so important. I feel bad that you did that. It was my birthday yesterday and they yeah. So I think, I think you all know where I'm going to go with this. Yeah. But because it's not licensed, we won't be sued. To you, happy birthday. There's only one of two ways to go with that. There's the kind of like, oh no, you shouldn't stop. <laughs> you just gotta take yeah. the love. Uh, so Doctor Strange That's has obviously thing. gone through a lot and his actions lead to the success of defeating Thanos. Yeah. And he's developed so much as a sorcerer, but also as a man. Yeah. So what's next for him? Just easy softball questions. I think, yeah, just some, you know, home economics and cooking, <laughs> yeah. knitwear, uh, and a kind of uh, crazy line in horror. Um, Look, I, I'm, 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 I'm really excited to be at the, the dawn of this project and I think it's vital to maintain the integrity of humour and stuff that we had in the first film but with this twist of horror which I think will really have people gripped. Is that twist of horror going to change any way that you approach him as a character at all? Or um, He'll be facing unexpected things. I think he'll be in a position rather like the audience of not knowing what's coming at him. There was a lot of authority to his character, I thought, in the... Avengers iterations and even in Thor as well. So we're going back to kind of trying to destroy him a bit, I think. Fantastic. Kevin, again, being that it is Hall H, you know I'm going to ask you, do you have anything else you can share? Uh, not much, obviously, early days, but when you have a strong sorcerer, it also helps when you have a strong witch. And the Scarlet Witch is appearing in this movie alongside her. Let's bring Lizzie Olsen back out. The events that you will see Wanda go through in the WandaVision epic series will be reflected and tied directly into Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madden. So Elizabeth, thanks for joining us back on stage. That being said, is there anything that you can tell us about how your Disney Plus show will play into um, Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness? I don't know if I could answer the how, but I think it's, I'm really excited to be able to link one story on one medium and bring it into the features. We haven't done that yet, and I think that's super unique to MCU. And I think that might be the future, <laughs> but I don't know anything. <laughs> I really don't know anything. It's all still team. secret. <laughs> well, thank you guys so much for joining us. Scott, Benedict, and Elizabeth, everybody. Thank you for having all the info on Dr. Strange. goes. Now, the next thing we're going to talk about is for summer 2021, and it's something that Marvel Studios has never had an opportunity to do before. The very, very first animated series ever from Marvel Studios. We've been working on these movies for 10 plus years, 
there are always ideas we have, always other things we want to try. And with this, all of those set in stone MCU scenes and experiences you've seen before, you'll see different versions of in this. Something incredibly exciting about it is that a huge majority of the actors from our movies are reprising their roles in very different forms in this animated series. And you may have heard an awesome voice narrate that piece. That awesome voice is The Watcher, played in this series by the amazing Jeffrey Wright. So Jeffrey, how excited are you to play The Watcher and what are you gonna be bringing to the role specifically for him? How excited are you to be here? <laughs> I think that's my answer. Um, I, uh, I think, uh, you know, it's uh, really exciting to be a part of, uh, of the, you know, the Marvel Cinematic Universe, of course. Uh, it's also, for me, um, a way to, to get my son to return my texts. <laughs> um, you know, I'm thinking about doing this Marvel thing. What? <laughs> Kevin Feige says, uh, remember to take out the garbage. Oh, okay, when, now? <laughs> So, uh, no, I'm, 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 I'm terribly excited to, uh, to be a part of this. This is like modern myth-making. Uh, you guys thrilled to this stuff. So, uh, so I'm stoked to be here. Is there anything that you can tell us about the role? Uh, well, the Watcher um, is a being, a non-earthly being, who observes all things. He's uh, watching over the multiverse and occasionally may or may not intervene with the doings of earthlings. Um, other than that, he's off doing his own thing, so I can relate to that as well. Um, he's like the internet, he just sits back and makes comments? <laughs> well, we'll see, we'll see. Um, it's also, he, 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 well, he, you know, today is the 50th anniversary of the lunar landing. Yes, yes. So, The Watcher first appears in 63, I think, Fantastic Four, uh, and uh, he, <laughs> there you go, he turns up uh, on the moon, because although today's the 50th anniversary, you know, The Watcher had a crib there ages ago, you know, so, so um, that's, uh, that's who he is, and we'll see where we take it. We could take it anywhere. Awesome, well I look forward to listening to you as The Watcher. Thank you so much for joining us here at San Diego Comic-Con. Thank you. Everyone. Awesome. We, uh, you know what we haven't done yet uh, at all today? We haven't talked about any of the OG original Avengers. It all happen, right? How about Kevin? Give it up for Kevin, y'all. Come on, him and all have a ball. So, Jeremy, thanks for joining us here in Hall H. Uh, what are you here to talk about? Uh, look, I can blow wind about a whole lot of things I can't talk about, but I think he might have put something together. Something? Well, something. See it. Maybe. Series coming to Disney Plus. So, wait a second. Yeah. Was that Kate Bishop then? Yeah, the better version of Hawkeye. Yeah, the best version of Hawkeye. Yeah. That's awesome. So I know things are still a little secret about the show. Is there anything that you can share with us? No. <laughs> Come on. This is what I'm trained to do. But what was exciting about it for me is essentially, they showed that to me I think a few days ago. I'm like, dude, this is so amazing. Because, you know, what I get to do in the show ultimately is shepherd an amazing character to be ultimately probably a better better version of me and the, the the sentiment of what that is is what 
I think the, 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 the fiber of what Hawkeye is, at least what I think Hawkeye is, is a superhero without superpowers. And I can teach someone else how to be a superhero without superpowers. And I think that's an amazing sentiment to uh, share with people. Because everyone, that means everyone's a damn superhero, right? With fortitude, with strength, you're a dang superhero. And I think that's fantastic. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much for hanging out with us. Also, you win Best Entrance of Hall H, for sure. Thank you for that. That was awesome. <laughs> Definitely looking forward to more Hawkeye. Jeremy Thank Renner, you so much. Everybody. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Rock on, man. Have a good con. Thank you, guys. Jeremy Renner, Hawkeye. Rock on. Bringing Kate Bishop into the MCU. And, by the way, we'll explore more of his time as Ronan in this series. So, it looks like there's one more little untitled there towards the end. The film we have, third film of 2021, is this. Give it up for Chris Hemsworth! Isn't that the best title treatment? Oh, ever? hey, look at us. Oh, well, that's not hard. <laughs> Taika, what have you got for storing us with us? And are we going to uh, see Korga Meek again? Sorry, can you? Oh, okay. I see where this question's going. Um, <laughs> is there sort of like an ongoing relationship between Thor and Korg? Is it sort of like a thing that where they continue the Love the friendship thunder. slash love. Yes. That they some thunder that they established in Ragnarok. <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? That's the first time I've seen the uh, that 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 logo. That that's brilliant. Whoa, love and Thor, thunder. love and thunder. Wow. Are you thunder and I'm because that's right. there's nothing more powerful in the world than love and thunder. <laughs> and the combination. I dropped this microphone, but it's too expensive. So, Chris, where are we seeing Thor headed in this film? Because he was hurting a little bit at the last one. Uh, he's headed to 7-Eleven. He got a little, uh, little Netflix subscription. And uh, he's, he's, he may be on the couch, but, but who knows? You know, I think Tiger's got something pretty... Who knows? Good. Only I do, yeah, because sure. they haven't read the script. Because I've never seen the script. <laughs> it's refused to show it to us. Yeah. That makes my next question to Tessa a little awkward, since I don't know if you would know, but day one as King of Asgard, what would Valkyrie first change in new Asgard? Um, I think, first of all, uh, as king, as new king, she needs to find her queen. So that would be... <laughs> that would be her first order of business. She has some ideas. Uh, keep you posted. And then, uh, I don't know, what's cool about Asgard, you know, as it has already been mentioned, that Asgard is not a place, but a people. So I think just reinvesting in her people and a cool thing is to create refuge for any person that might need it. That, to me, is the idea of a perfect Asgard. The kind of kingdom she'd want to rule over. So that's, I think, what she'll do. And then hopefully she'll hang out with love and thunder, which he is both to me. The create love and thunder. The love I feel for him gives me thunder. Yeah. All over. Hi, Elsa. That's and his wife. the thunder I feel. <laughs> so, Taika, I know you love the comics. Is there any other particular storyline that you've pulled from? Um, yes. <laughs> so there is a... Uh, when we were shooting Ragnarok, I was reading um, one storyline by, uh, by Jason Aaron called The Mighty Thor. And for those of you who know that storyline, it's incredible. It's full of emotion and love and thunder. And it introduces, for the first time, 
female Thor. So, for us, there's only one person who could play that role. Only one. And she's here. I'm going to introduce her to you now. Please welcome to the stage, Natalie Portman. Yeah. MCU, but this time holding the hammer. Feels pretty good. <laughs> I always had a little hammer envy. So. I, I got plenty of ha hammer envy as well. It's Captain America, know yourself, it's great. It's, it doesn't feel so it's, it was really sad. I'm gonna get back to Netflix. <laughs> it's cool, guys. I'll be at 7 Eleven. First of all, awesome announcement. Super excited to see Jane as Thor. Thank you guys so much for coming up on stage and sharing all Thank this. Thank you guys. Come uh, wait for you to see it. So there it is. We've come to the end of this timeline. But there is one right there at the beginning. In fact, the one that's out next on May 1st, 2020. Shooting right now in London. They flew overnight and got here this morning. Say hello to the director, Kate Shortland. And meet the cast as Alexi David Harbour. The Black Widow herself, Scarlett Johansson! Thank you guys for joining us. Um, I'll jump into this really quick. Kate, will we finally be able to dive into, into Natasha Romanoff's past and what made her ledger red in the first place? Yeah, I think that's what drew me to the story is she has so many secrets and she's got so much vulnerability and I think that's what makes her such a great heroine and I think in this film we get to understand her past and she gets to put all the pieces of herself back together and come out a whole person and I think we're all excited about helping her on that journey. Fantastic. Through seven films over the last ten years, what are you excited for fans to discover about Natasha this go around? Hello. Um, I, I, you know, it, I don't think I could have uh, played this iteration of Natasha ten years ago. It would have been a very different film, and. Um, you know, I, I get to play Natasha as a fully realized woman um, and, uh, and in all of her many facets. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm excited for fans to see the flawed side of her, what she perceives to be the flawed side of her. Um, and I'm looking to wipe out some of that red in my ledger. So you guys will be seeing a lot of that. Or at least make a mark anyway. David, you've got a lot of fans from Stranger Things. Oh, no! 
Wait a minute, wait a minute. Come on, settle down, we're at the Marvel panel. Please don't give me my day job away. So you've been hitting com Comic-Con pretty hard. Uh, what, are you excited to expand your fan base now that you've joined the MCU? Who writes these questions? That is the dumbest question of Am I excited to expand my fan base in the Marvel Universe? Hell yes! I love you guys. I love these movies. Look at this. This guy. Is he your this favorite? Guy. Captain America, your favorite? Oh, he's, uh... I have complicated feelings about this man. <laughs> You'll come to understand that later. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about Yelena? Hi. Um, oh, is this Ed is working? Uh, yeah, I'm playing Yelena, um, sister figure to Natasha. This is my first Comic Con, and it's totally nuts to be here um, with these people, with this film. I can't even see the back of the room, which is nuts. <laughs> um, I'm so excited to be a part of, of this family and our film and 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 the MC universe. Um, and I guess you'll have to watch the film to figure out the next bit, but yeah. <laughs> awesome, well thanks for joining us. I had no idea it was your first Comic-Con. It's my first! That's great! Uh, OT, your character is a contact from Black Widow's past, even before she was working with S.H.I.E.L.D., so can you tell us a little bit more about that relationship? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, this is actually my first Comic-Con oh as well. Oh my god! Also congratulations! Uh, you guys are amazing. Like, <laughs> this is... A little overwhelming, but I'm fine. Um, so yeah, I, I think uh, they ostensibly have like a professional relationship. He's like a, a fixer, but there's a kind of like romantic undercurrent. You know, well, I mean, at least I'm kind of into her, but it's tough to kind of make a relationship work when the lady you're into is, you know, an international killer. Kind of makes it tough. So um, yeah. Wait a minute, you have romantic feelings about me? Oh god, I'm mean, not in front of everybody. Oh <laughs> now. Okay, I've got something to say. Um, <laughs> Your character. Yeah, my, sorry, my character. My character has romantic feelings. Uh, and Rachel, what attracted you to do a film in the Marvel Cinematic Universe? <laughs> Were you able to hear me? I don't know. No, not quite. This is um, my first Comic Con too. I oh come here as a, as a visitor about 10 years ago, but it's my first time here up in this incredible room with these, is it thousands? Like thousands, right? People. <laughs> That's <laughs> awesome. Well, so what was your question? It sorry. was, what attracted you to do a film in the Marvel Cinematic Universe? Well, what is more exciting than the, the mythology of the Marvel Universe? There is nothing more exciting um, and escapist and interesting. But also, they've really put at the forefront female, strong, powerful female characters. And Kate Shortland, our director, and working alongside Scarlett and Florence, two incredibly powerful female characters, and, and my, Melina, my character too, is a pretty, pretty tough chick. And these other wonderful female characters. <laughs> Dave, Dave and Nate here are awesome too. I love men as well as women. <laughs> so Scarlett, I know that you guys just started shooting. Uh, it is Comic-Con, however, so did you bring anything else for Hall H? Oh my god, well, I mean, we've only been shooting for 30 days, but of course we brought something! We have a little something to show you all. Don't be judgy. They came down there with you to watch it for the first time. <laughs> so I've got three things I want to say. One, uh, very excited to see more of Natasha's backstory. Two, that fight scene was brutal and I absolutely loved it. And three, I'm digging those hats. Oh, thank you. Yes. Um, you this old thing? That little old thing. I don't suppose you might have brought 7,000 extra. <laughs>
the picture. Again, reminder, please stay in your seats. We definitely have people coming by to pass these out. Should we bring back out everybody? We absolutely should bring back out right. everybody. Let's bring out the cast and director, Thor, Love and Thunder. Hawkeye himself, Jeremy Renner. Jeffrey Wright from What If? Cast and filmmakers from Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. Loki's Tom Hiddleston. Rings, the cast from WandaVision, the Falcon and the Winter Soldier, and the cast of the Eternals. We have everybody? All right. Also be careful you don't fall off the back of the stage. He's over here behind me. People, yep, good, good idea. People in the crowd, stand up now if you've got your hat so that you're in the background. Yes, that looks awesome. It's like school photo day. <laughs> Phase four, thank you. Now, there's a lot of other stuff we didn't get a chance to talk about today. We, we didn't even mention that we're making Black Panther 2. Didn't come up, we didn't, we didn't mention the fact that Guardians of the Galaxy 3 is coming. We didn't have time to talk about Captain Marvel 2 on the way. I didn't even have time to talk about the Fantastic Four. And there's, and there's, and there's, there's no time left to talk about mutants and how mutants come into the MCU. But, you know what, all that stuff's been rumored, you've heard about rumors, but I want to leave you today with one more thing that I don't think has been rumored about. Ladies and gentlemen, two-time Academy Award winner, Mahershala Ali. You did? What is that? Thank you! Thank you! 